government has now signed off on its cost of living package. Sinn Féin has argued strongly for a spring bonus and we welcome these additional support payments to protect vulnerable people. High energy costs, food price, prices and increases to come in fuel costs will mean workers and families will remain under pressure. Taoiseach, for the life of me, I can't understand how the three men leading government, after spending two months in talks, could produce a package that is silent on housing. We know that extortionate housing costs are at the very heart of this crisis, and yet there's nothing here for renters. These are workers and families fleeced by hike after hike, paying out the lion's share of their income on rent. There's nothing here for mortgage holders either, battered by a barrage of interest rate increases. They're forced to pay hundreds more in mortgage repayments and there is still more to come. The pressure is enormous. Many renters and mortgage holders are wondering how much more they can take. They're hanging on by a thread. And yet, it seems they didn't even cross your mind when government put this package together. So many of our young people are forced out of Ireland because they can't afford a roof over their heads. They've lost hope of a good life at home because government consistently fails to see the bigger picture on the issues affecting their lives. They watch government fiddle around the edges but never show any real ambition to fix housing. Over the weekend, I spoke to one heartbroken mother whose three sons are bound for Australia. They all have good qualifications and good jobs, but the extortionate cost of housing means they have no chance of building a decent future here, so they have decided to go. And like so many who have already left, they worry that they won't have the chance to come back home. It's the job of government to fix that. Today we discuss the cost of living, but we also need to talk about the cost of leaving. The cost of our young people leaving Ireland because of the housing emergency is massive. The cost and damage to society, our economy and competitiveness to families and community is a cost that we can't afford. This generation being forced out is brimming with talent, education, ideas, but they need a government with the determination and courage to do the big things so they can have a shot at the life they deserve. Tuganam Pokosh the Custis of Arakthala, a dogra in real to Sinu, Navir the Ernakustis Tihia to Tubashtuk, Aspaganivu Arkisna. Aspaganivu er Vorgoshti, Rud er Bith, the Gluen, Arugus Asantir, the War Gair came Tihiokta, Ata Egairi Nis Masa Tishuk. To really get to grips with the cost of living, you have to deal with the extortionate housing costs. And I asked you last week to do three things that would help turn the tide. And I'm asking you again today to do these things. Legislate urgently to ban rent increases for three years and cut rents by putting a month's rent back into renters' pockets through a refundable tax credit. Introduce targeted, time-bound mortgage relief to support struggling homeowners. And for those families and workers, and they are many, who are terrified that they will lose their rented home, extend the eviction ban until the end of the year. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, Thank you, Maggot. Um, this is from Gwil and of Fos on Ard, and Gwil Brew or Chilek. Uh, Ta Galore Chilek Fui Brew, um, Ta uh, Ganoi Fui Brew, August um, Ta Realtish a Kauru, uh, Ta Bame Moor er Chilek Le Maclean Zaskola, um, Ganohi Biog, uh, August uh, Dini Gan Morn Marhampla Pinchineri. Uh, the government decided today to agree a, another cost of living package. We are experiencing a major cost of living crisis uh, in Ireland and globally. And a lot of people are struggling to make ends meet and businesses are grappling with rising costs. But because of the strength of our economy and the health of our public finances, we have been able to respond dynamically to help people, families, businesses and farmers to manage rising costs. Since the cost of living crisis began, 
We have taken 25 individual actions to date, many of which are permanent. Uh, these include higher pay, higher pensions and higher weekly welfare payments, which have only kicked in in the last few weeks. It also includes lower income taxes for young workers like some of those you mentioned and a rent tax credit only introduced in the last few weeks, €500 Euros per renter uh, if paying income tax. About 170,000 people have availed of that uh, and we are encouraging more to do so. Uh, we have also reduced the cost of childcare, something really important uh, for young, young families, bringing it down by 25% only in the past few weeks and we want to go further. Uh, we have reduced the cost of healthcare, going to school reduced the cost of public transport for young people uh, and also reduced uh, student fees and more students will become eligible uh, for student uh, grants uh, as, the, as the, the year goes on. This is a more targeted package than been the case previously but there are universal measures as well. We decided to focus on families of school aged children, on pensioners and people who are very vulnerable like people with disabilities, carers and lone parents and also small and medium sized uh, medium-sized businesses, particularly for families with young children. There is an addition, additional €100 Euro payment in June. An additional €100 Euros on the back-to-school clothing and footwear allowance will be repeated. Uh, working families, low-income working families in receipt of the working family payment, receiving an extra €200, Euros, which will be important as a child poverty and welfare measure. We are waiving state exam fees again this year uh, and also school transport. Um, there will be only a modest charge and that I think will be very welcome in rural areas in particular. Uh, for pensioners and vulnerable people, as I mentioned earlier, €200 Euro bonus payment to be paid in April, and we are extending the free hot school meals uh, scheme to all DESH schools uh, and all special schools as well. Uh, and Minister Humphreys will work on plans to extend it beyond DESH schools uh, in 2024. I, I think you mentioned a few things, Deputy. You mentioned the issue, ish, ish, issue, issue of rents, rents and mortgage holders. And I think it is important to say that this wasn't a budget, wasn't a mini budget. We didn't plan it to be, to, be, to be as such. But there is a rent tax credit only introduced in the last couple of weeks. People are claiming it now. We think about 200,000 renters will benefit from that. Uh, and we want more, 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 more to avail of it. Uh, we have rent pressure zones already, Deputy. And you'll know from the recent daft, daft report that for established renters, for people who are already renting, that's the vast majority of renters, rents went up by about 3.6% last year. Um, the, the real difficulty and the major difficulty we have uh, is with new, new properties coming on the market for the first time and that's where your rent freeze uh, would be of no benefit whatsoever. It's those new properties coming on the market for the first time where we're seeing those uh, rents rising by 13 percent, uh, I think was, was the correct figure, for established renters, people who are, who are renting already, uh, increases of about 3 percent, 3.6 percent this year. And I think it's important to bear in mind that people who rent and people who uh, have mortgages you know, they're also workers. Uh, they also use petrol and diesel. Uh, they also use electricity and gas. And I was interested to hear your finance spokesperson on the radio there the other day uh, saying that you would, you would want the VAT and hospitality to go back up right away. Thank you, Tisha. Uh, that you would extend the excise uh, reductions on petrol and diesel only until May. And that you would have VAT and electricity and gas go up in May as well. So for anyone driving a car, anyone using petrol or Over diesel, now, Tisha, anyone using please. electricity or gas, they would face tax hikes under Sinn Féin within weeks. We have put them off until much later in the year. Deputy MacDonald. Thank you. So, um, it beggars belief that you would produce any uh, package that completely ignores the fact that rents uh, are still out of control. Rents should not be rising by any percentage point. They need to come down. And that is not going to happen automatically. That will require government to take action. For uh, people paying their mortgages, some of whom, by the way, have been thrown to the wolves or thrown to the vultures, I should say, and who are getting rightly screwed by those institutions, you have given them no comfort and no support whatsoever. So it is um, not sufficient for you to say, well, this isn't a budget. You said very clearly that there would be a cost of living package, that you are, are aware since coming back as Taoiseach that we have a housing emergency and that it would be your top priority. Well, you could have fooled the renters and the mortgage holders of Ireland because that's not what your package says. Thank you, Deputy. So Taoiseach, again, I ask you to include renters, 
to include more good shoulders in this package and to add to the measures that you have announced today Time to give relief to is. renters, mortgage shoulders and those Corla, particularly who fear now that as the eviction ban comes to an end that they may lose the roof over their heads. Uh, thanks Deputy. Um, there's one thing I, I agree with you on, rents do need to come down. Uh, rents are very high in Ireland uh, and are out of kilter with uh, comparable countries and comparable uh, cities and, and regions. Um, and there are ways that we can do that. One of those is the rent tax credit. It was only introduced eight weeks ago, Deputy. Only eight weeks ago. Uh, and nearly 200,000 people have claimed that already. Uh, 500 euros per renter this year and next year, 1,000 for a couple, 1,500 for three people renting. Uh, for a lot of people, it's the best part of a month's rent uh, back in their pockets. We have the rent pressure zones. And because of the rent pressure zones, according to daft.ie, the vast majority of people who are renting, people who are established sitting renters, existing tenants, saw rents increase by about 3.5% last year. The huge problem that we have is on very high rents on properties that are new to the market. And the only thing we can do about that is increase supply. And you object to increase supply. Uh, you, you object to increase supply because, because, it's, because it's for rent. You object to it because it is full of one-bedroom apartments for transients, as your party describes them. Uh, we need more supply, and that has to be public and private. It has to be, has to be additional public rental properties through cost, cost rental, which is now a reality. It has to be additional social housing, which is now a reality. Last year, uh, we think about 8,000 new social homes built, the highest since 1975. And also, it needs private supply. And that's the kind of thing that you object to all the time, Deputy. Thank you. Uh, 